almost since 2.0. Day 74. So I'm finally getting back to cooking some stuff. That's some chicken that I cooked last night. Got some bacon that I'm gonna cook today as well. Gonna do some dishes here. I'm feeling better asterisk. <laughs> asterisk being that although it is better, it is still not a grand improvement. It's not anything that's like really noteworthy. But um, I'm likely not infectious anymore because throughout the day yesterday, one of the indicators that I've learned throughout the years of being alive is that generally when you're infectious and when things are bad, um, phlegm is a pretty good indicator of how bad things are. Now, is it entirely, is, is my assessment entirely accurate? I don't really know. But when most of it is clear and runny, not thick, and not like greenish or yellowish, it's generally a good sign that things are improving. Now, of course, if you're still coughing up crap, you're still, you know, dealing with it in some way. But, you know... One of the things about, you know, especially with the whole, with the chills and, and just the general malaise, it's because your body is fighting it. It's, a, it's actively trying to outcompete the virus to kill it off. And that takes, oh, damn. Good thing you didn't see that one. And holy crap, though, it felt good, though. It's like a, <laughs> oh man, it's like one of the boogers that's like deep in the back of your nose, when you pull it out, it's like both really solid, thick, but running at the same time, and when you do, you feel like you can breathe a little bit, yeah, that, that just happens. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was gross, but it felt good. <coughs> it's like it's not blocking anything anymore. Also a good sign. But the coloration wasn't great, that's for sure. <laughs> Traffic's cleared up. Start moving again. <laughs> So bad. And I'm sure anybody watching is probably like, oh, it's fucking gross. No. Ugh, so gross. Yeah, it's gross. Human body is fantastic and disgusting all at the same time. Been like that for a long, long time, too. Um, I've got some bush baked beans that I'm going to. I don't know why I started scrubbing with my left hand and not a lefty. But um, I'm going to be a can of bush baked beans that I'm going to cook with the bacon and chicken. I don't know how much more chicken I'll be buying. I've got two and a half weeks till this is done. I still don't know what the next step is because this being sick put a huge you know, delay on everything. Because today, right now, is when I'm supposed to be having my... Uh, my driving test. The whole point was to try to get this done as soon as possible. And I couldn't get it done. So I'm probably still gonna have to do yet another month here in an Airbnb somewhere. I might just take up a room, I don't know. I'm not sure. 
Because whatever it is, I gotta mitigate my costs. I'm already, what? On the third month. Two more months than I had hoped. Going into another fourth month. So, you know, three more months than I had hoped. And, you know, that's frustrating. It's expensive. You know, I've got half the money that I started with. Still haven't even done my taxes yet, so I don't have to pay on that too, I'm sure. Because I pulled money out. And I pulled way more money out than I wanted to. Because I had to pull money out and then I had to do it again. To, to compensate for the people who didn't respond to me so that I could actually still pay for something. Um, into car budget that's cutting into fuel budget and all sorts of other stuff with regards to the potential future so I don't know what the hell's going to go on. I can't plan too far ahead in time because I just I can't wrap my mind around it and then know that whatever I put in the plan, uh, practice will actually happen. Like the, today I was supposed to be driving for my driving test that was put in a, a, a that was what? A two week old plan. But I got sick in the middle of it. I said, like, what the hell's not gonna happen next week that could throw a wrench in my plans? This is what happens every fucking time I plan. Life is what happens when you're making plans. And I hate it. I can't do anything about it either. Which I hate even more. Um. Dump a chunk of bacon in here. Just a big ass collection. Oops. And then I'm gonna cook it up. Just like I did last night with the chicken. Fridge. Because what I did last night with the chicken was that I cooked it up. And there's a third piece missing, and I chopped that up after it was cooked. Because it was just easier to chop it up, and it was more sanitary. It's like, I don't have to worry about cleaning the, the kitchen shears at the moment. Or anything, so. And it's fucking hot in here, too. The last couple of days, it was pretty warm. Like, yesterday, I think it was like 75 degrees. And so, like, having my heater on and everything, I mean, fortunately, they kicked off, but still, I was like, water didn't suck. Yeah, I could have got filters or something, but, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't anticipating staying here this long. Um, so, it's so whatever, I guess. What I need to do is, I need to get out a multi-bowl. One of these is going to be my serving dish. The other one is going to be a storing dish. The other day, I think it was yesterday, I don't remember, but I said, you know how like lard is fat for uh, pigs. 
fat for chickens, that little splotch right there, it's called schmaltz. And fat for beef is tallow. I don't know why I know these things. I don't know why these things are important. Why you should care about them. Why I'm informing you of them. I don't know. Largely doesn't matter. But tell me because I feel like it, I guess. Huh? And I'm gonna incorporate the maple and cured bacon baked beans. Time comes, I gotta cut this up. This is just a slab of meat, um, but that'll come when it's time to put it all back in the pot, which is still too small. But at this point, I mean, really, is it is it even a good idea to um, go to my storage and get my giant pot? And I don't know. I don't think so. Whatever. Um, <coughs> I don't know. I don't know what to talk about. I don't know what to say. I've got a phone call with my therapist tomorrow. He called me up later. So like a Monday, I believe, I had a call with my new psychiatrist. Which is you know, they um, providing, uh, me writing prescriptions and everything, but I really liked her. I kind of wish she had been my doctor this whole time. My therapist, she's not a psychologist, she can't diagnose. Um, but just talking to her was probably the best session I had ever had. And... That kind of sucks, but at the same time, it's good. But it sucks that she's not going to be my therapist. Um, I mean, no hate towards the current therapist, but... I felt better at the end of that conversation. Normally, I don't with my therapist. It's not going to have a choice. It's, it's you know... <coughs> Beggars supposedly can't be choosers. Well, that's because we've made a society do that. We've created a society that does that. Instead of saying, let's give people a choice. It's, no, we've chosen for you. That's like, why do we do this? Why do we feel that this is acceptable? So the great thing about this fork is that curve. It's like, it's kind of sharp. It's called a nork. K-N-O-R-K. It's a knife fork. It's not really that sharp. It's more of a butter knife. Um, but because of that curve, it helps with stuff like cooking. Is I can stab, when I can stab. And it, you know, the curve helps to hold it. Oops. Splash some grease over there. Let's not have a grease fire. That would be terrible. Um, literally, the last thing in the world I need is a grease fighter. A grease fire right now. Grease fighter! Round button. Oh, something I hadn't really been putting too much thought into doing, but I did it anyway. Um, I need to get a little too sputtery. I downloaded, opened up, used to completion a video editor. Still not gonna edit these videos. Um this is more work than I want to do. Oh yeah, and yesterday, literally, literally, the moment I turned the phone back around to uh, continue recording, it cut off. 
Put this over here. Oops, I didn't realize you turned on the fan. <coughs> so that was unfortunate. Made it look like I turned it off myself, which I didn't. Because otherwise I wouldn't have sat there and talked to myself for another 15 minutes. You know? Because I never put my finger around that side. Um, but yeah, I downloaded uh, DaVinci Resolve. Because it's, uh, you can get a free version of it. I don't know how long that free trial is, if there even is, um, period. But, mm, supposedly, you, uh, you can just use it for however long. It doesn't have, like, a pop-up at the front that's saying, you know, you need to register or anything like that. Like uh, with Reaper, for instance, is a. Uh, I've, I've had Reaper on my computer for a while. Although I think I deleted that and actually loaded it up not too long ago as well. Uh, because I was I was watching The Witcher, season two finale, and in the er in the first scene of the episode, I'm not going to spoil it or anything for anybody who hasn't seen it. It's good. I, the second season is much better if I think. Um, it's less... <coughs> it's less convoluted. It doesn't deal with the timeline situation as much. Um, which is why the first season is kind of rough. Because if you haven't played the games or read the books or anything like that, you're not really aware of what's going on. And I wasn't aware of what was going on. Um, so... It... it felt really disjointed watching the first season. This season is much more linear. It's much more streamlined. The story, I mean, it's still good. Like, the first season is also really good. I'm not knocking the first season. I'm just saying that is what made it difficult to get into and really appreciate the show. This time around, like, there's some moments where you're just like, really? You know... Series going through like this obstacle course thing, and just like you know, maybe treating it like a video game, like you would in the video game, I guess. Which I guess is how you might approach it. I'm not sure, but at the same time, it's like it seems less plausible for a human to approach it the way that she did, um, and how successful she became um, through the trial. But anyway. There's a sound effect that happens, and I may have mentioned this in another video, I'm not sure, but I've been playing a lot of EverQuest, and there's a sound effect that happens, and it's actually kind of subtle. I was surprised that I picked up on it, um, but it's this idling sound of these ghost uh, enemies that are in the expansion for EverQuest, in the first expansion called Kunark. And there's certain places where you're gonna you're gonna experience those ghost mobs, uh, mobile objectives, um, more more frequently. And in some places, like you'll be so when you're playing EverQuest, you're you usually find a camp, which is just like if you would so a campground somewhere and you camp to that place. Um, you kind of do the same thing when you're playing EverQuest, except instead of just, you know, sitting there singing Kumbaya, fucking cooking chicken wings or whatever, you're actively having someone go out there and grab enemies so you can kill them, bring them back to your camp and then kill them. Um, so they get experience and loot and all that good shit. So anyway, <clears throat> blow my nose. In a couple of the places in EverQuest, there are a wide, there's a large amount of undead ghost mobs. And 
they make this very specific sound. So when you're around it for a lot, and I've been doing this for almost a year, for over a year now, with multiple characters going into some of the same dungeons and doing some of the same camps, you get really accustomed to hearing these sounds. And I heard it, that specific sound, during like the first, I wanna say like four or five minutes of uh, that episode of, uh, season two, episode eight of The Witcher. And so I took the episode that I have I popped it into my uh, into Reaper, which is my audio editor, and trimmed it to that, like bumped it up like maybe eight or ten decibels, something like that, so it was a lot more easy to tell. Um, gave a little fade on the end, so it's not like a hard in and out kind of thing. Um, and then rendered that clip and then uploaded it to the Discord for the guild that I'm in in the game. Now, nobody cared, but that's the first time I've used an audio or video editing software program in literal, like in over a year and a half. Well, not a year and a half, over a year. Because um, the last time I used a video editing program for anything was when my grandmother died of COVID last year. Right around my birthday, in fact. Um, like, she died, I want to say, a few days after the fact, after I turned, uh, 39. And so I made, like, a, a video, it's kind of a lie, because I already been fired. But, you know, I was like, maybe I'm going to edutainment or something like that. I was saying that I was at, you know, the radio station, I wasn't at the radio station anymore. I hadn't been working there and I'd been laid off. But then I literally got fired, terminated, on my birthday. Um, and then grandmother died within, a, I think, a week or two later. Um, and then I had stopped uh, after that because, like, I wasn't, I didn't like what I had made anyway. The video just felt bad as it was. The, the voice recording necessary, necessary for it felt stupid. Like, <coughs> I honestly can't remember why I even made the video. Like, why I needed to. Um, you know, maybe I felt guilty for not having spoken to her in a while. I don't know. Um, but I think this thing is effectively done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just let that cool. Uh, I think I'm not going to go ahead and do... Cause I don't want to deal with cutting that up or anything right now. I think instead I'm going to do what I did last night. Instead of this, I'm going to do this and the chicken. And at some point in the coming days, I'll go to Kukulas. I'll get some more chicken. I'm going to go to the store soon enough as it is. Maybe by Sunday, not sure. And um, so instead, what I'll do is I'll just prep this here. See, this is nice and cold. It's got a little bit of the you know chicken fat on it, so it's a little on the slimy side, but that's good. You know, because it's it's tasty. A little bit of collagen in it, it's a little gelatin. And what I'll do also before I even put this on the fire is I'll go back in there because I've got that uh, container filled with uh, various kinds of uh, fats you know, you know, the butter, and then the chicken fat, and then the bacon fat as the parts still in there. And then I'll throw in a dollop of that. And see, the skin actually crisped up nice and nice and brown when I was cooking it too. So I'm like, why, why do what I've been doing in the past? Because like now, I could just lick this clean if I felt like it, instead of worrying about you know touching raw foods and all that shit. You just pull it out, cut it on whole, and pre-prep it in that regard. Who needs to do it the other way? Um, 
But um, like the thing is, is that with regards to I'm gonna do the beans first. With regards to editing, like ever since I started doing it, I've liked doing it. More so, obviously, like any other creative endeavor, I like the output, um, especially when the, the end product is good. Um, I generally don't. I don't like all the stress and the, the uncertainty. But there's something to it that still, even to this day, despite not having done it in over a year, there's something about doing it that I like. There's something that I want from it. What that is, I don't know. Couldn't tell you. Um, but you know, it's like, I'll be honest, like I would do it more if I had more people to work with, with regards to doing it. Like if I was in a room talking to somebody, recording some stuff, it would be easier, it would be more fun, because it has been that before. I've done that before. Um, but it's largely just a solo job. And I hate that. I don't want to work all by myself. I want to work with people in the room with me. I mean, if I can't work with them in the room with me, like, I... <coughs> they gotta at least be, you know, minimum, minimum something like a Zoom call. But I don't even want that. Like, I'm one of those people who wants to, you know, Funny. So, one of the last things my, my lady friend from France has uh, said in our recent conversation didn't go anywhere. Um, ow, fuck. Hot. Um, she had stated, you know, like, she kind of likes going to work because it gets it out of the house. And I'm like, yeah, unless your house is better. <laughs> um, but that's the thing too like I'm I'm similar in that with her where I don't generally want to have to work at home like I'm not saying that nobody should be forced to work at work no I don't want that what I want is the option And of course, depending on the job, it may or may not be um, as uh, doable, if you will, depending on the job, of course. Um, I need this one. So. What does this have anything to do with video editing or anything? Well, I'll check the thing again. How long have I been recording? Only 20 minutes, that's not too bad. <coughs> it's a good thing that keeps happening because it's more and more is getting out. It's also uh, more flowy like water. So anywho, um, open up my chest a bit because it's just like it's getting a little hot in here um let's turn it up just a bit i've liked doing editing more when it's been brief within about an hour or so generally speaking um, but, you know, if I'm working with somebody else, especially if somebody who knows what they want, 
Um, because if you leave it up to me, I don't really feel like my choice is the only choice that should matter or will matter. Um, having another person and having to send it off and then have it come back and then send it off and have to come back. I don't want to fucking do that. I want immediate feedback right there. It's like, if I can play it for you and I don't have to wait for you to respond, awesome. That's the best route, in my opinion. This can of beans was a lot less liquid than the last one. Um, so, like, for instance, when I was, one of the best times that I had was when I was helping somebody else with their show intro. I was like, it needs to be under a minute. If you can make it 30 seconds, even better. Um, but based on some of the parameters that we were working around, it ended up being a minute, which was still fine. Um, it's just that for a show intro, a minute, well, well, I guess it was a promo, not an intro. It was a promo for the show. The thing about a show promo is that you need to be able to get people interested in it ASAP. Um, and you got to want them, they, they should want to tune into that show immediately, if at all possible. Which is why 30 seconds is really good because it can give you the information that's necessary. You can get people pushing that, you know, and especially because if, it, if it's something that is on demand, like a podcast, for instance, then they could just jump straight to it. And, you know, you're trying to appeal to the impulsive nature of humanity, I know. Um, and one could say, well, how much of that shit do you want to do? It's, that's a whole other conversation. But when I was working with her, I was trying to get her to be more energetic because it just wasn't coming off right. Um, like you can't just be like, like there's a reason why TikTok is what it is. Why almost everybody there seems so like dialed up to like 10. Almost every time everybody's dialed up to 10 all the time. And <laughs> there's a reason for that because it keeps you engaged. And depending on how things have been produced, written it or otherwise, um, it will keep you asking for more. Um, and that's the nature of the short form. And there's a lot of good content on TikTok. There, there's a bunch of good co uh, content on TikTok. It all depends on what you're after. Um, it's a lot of drama, too. Um, there's a lot of social justice-related stuff that, like, there's, there's some people out there who are being pieces of shit. But anyway, I needed her promo to be more like a promo and not a conversation because like you get, once you get people into the show itself, you can kind of tone down a bit. Um, now, obviously the promo should be, it should be relative in energy to what the nature of the show is. If it's a super laid back show, then you don't need to get people riled up and, and amped, and you don't need to be dialed up to 10. It's not necessary. But that's kind of the nature of her show. Like, she wasn't gonna be dialed up to 10 all the time, but it was a show about things that she was excited about. I'm like, okay, we need to, we need to figure out something. And so, I was like, you know what? You are not being energetic. You gotta stand up, and here's what's gonna happen. We're just gonna let it run. We're gonna let the recording run. I'm gonna go into the other room, which is in a sound-treated room, but you could still kinda hear through them. It uh, you know, just wouldn't pick up on the mics very well. She was in the other room with a hot mic. 
I walked around because you got to walk all the way around and then come into another room and then come into another room um, to be in the main studio. So I was sitting in the main studio. She was back in one of the back editing bays. And I'm like, go. And I'm like, I can't fucking hear you. And like once I could actually start hearing her through the, the, the glass, because there's like double sets of, of, of insulated glass. Um, and I could see that her energy was up. Then I was like, okay, do that again now. Um, and then when she did a full take at that energy, it was perfect. I go back, I was like, that was fucking good. And then we go back and then we listen to it and then she hears it and she's like, holy shit, that was great. And you know what's funny? Right now, as I'm recording this video, I'm all tingly. Because remembering that moment was so good. Not a lot of things that make me feel that way, remembering stuff. Collaborating with people. Getting people, you know, hyped up and stuff about the thing that you're doing is so fucking awesome. You know the worst thing about group projects that I really ever get to do that. I'm almost never in a situation where we're hyped about doing the project, where the product and the effort are creating this energy amongst the people. It's often, all right, let's all Delegate who's going to do what and then go off and do our own thing for the next couple of weeks or days or whatever um, That's also why I want short projects where it's something that like Can be done within the day Because then There's that push for that timeline But again, I still gotta be working with people If I gotta work by myself, it sucks. It's doable, but it sucks. Comparatively. I'm gonna let this cool down a bit. Uh, but yeah, that's why like, I, I generally don't do any editing on my own because I just don't have any kind of collaboration. So maybe that's something I can figure out, I don't know. Have fun.